Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and show you how to um, deploy the tent, the roof tent. You flip the latches down here and uh, take off the ladder. Then you go back over to this side. And release, release the uh, rack. Okay, so after you release the rack, you'll notice that the tent is attached to the rack on the inside. And it also is Velcroed and zippered. So you gotta unzip the tent. That's to keep all the moisture out in the weather. Okay, so once you get it all unzipped and unvelcroed, then you just grab the rack, flip it over. Inside, you'll notice they have rain flies. More rain flies. They also have ground tent your supports which you'll need for the tent up on the roof rack and don't be nervous when I first started doing this I was afraid I was gonna punch holes in the tent and trip and fall off the roof rack uh, but, I mean, you're very stable up here. The trailer doesn't really move. And the tent is built out of uh, like a military cloth they use in South Africa. It's just so darn heavy duty that it's ridiculous. So I wouldn't worry about messing it up. I mean, this is, this is really overbuilt for about 90% of any U.S. based expeditions. Okay, so it's all done, set up. Um, they have another big canvas that goes over and goes out about 10 feet all the way around if you want to stay for long term. Uh, I don't think we need to set that up today, but uh, you know, it takes about, it took about 15 minutes um, to get it all set up, pull out the kitchen, do everything I needed to do set the tent up um, so in 15 minutes you can have a pretty nice comfortable camp set up for a night a week or even a month or longer however long you want to stay because this base camp really is uh, built to last so shouldn't be a problem so just to show you uh, give you an idea how you know heavy duty this thing is and how thick the canvas is I mean with all the windows shut it really is completely dark inside the tent um, when I zip this shut, I almost need a flashlight to look around, even in broad daylight. So, I mean, that, that gives you an idea just how thick the canvas really is. So this gives you an idea how well it's built. You can see, you can see how thick the zippers are and weatherproof it is. And, I mean, look at the mosquito mesh on it. I mean, this is some thick stuff. <laughs> I don't know what kind of mosquitoes they have in Africa. <laughs> I thought I was scared to find out after looking at their uh, bug net. <laughs> but they put some pretty, pretty gritty paper on all the steps. It's like sandpaper, so you're not gonna slip in on it. It's good to go, even with ice on it. We've had ice on it in the middle of the night and it's still just fine. Now, another one of the cool features that I like about this trailer because it's the base camp, not only do you have that huge overhead canopy, but there is another ground tent that mounts, goes behind the ladder, comes down, and covers this entire area at a slant and attaches to the top of the rack and goes all the way over to the trailer. So to give you an idea, I mean, that's, that's a pretty good distance and pretty wide. That, that uh, tent there alone um, sleeps all my kids. So 
all my kids usually sleep down here. Well, five of them, and then the the, the youngest one will sleep up here with uh, with me and Mama. So it's good to go. Um, I like how high it is. You can still access. Like I said, they thought everything through. You can still access the side boxes, access anything you need. And if you take the ladder off, the ladder is actually a brace. But if you take the ladder off, and obviously don't have anybody in the tent, you can flip the lid and, and uh, access inside the, can in, inside the trailer uh, with the tent deployed. So that's a, that's a nice feature. You know, it doesn't hang up on anything or anything like that. So I really like that aspect of it. And this is another feature I like. Um, this doesn't have a little little sissy uh, stabilizer on it. This this thing is built super tough. So this comes down, and you can unhook the trailer from the vehicle, um, and this will keep it from tipping and uh, keep it stabilized for your uh, long extended campouts. Now one of the things I like about this also is the um, the hitch assembly. If you notice, this thing turns so that the trailer can pivot. Also, this is your braking assembly. So as this cylinder compresses, comes back here, hits the brakes, very simple setup, and uh, put, puts the brakes on. Now the trailer jack here is a pretty sweet setup as well. You just loosen it, drop it down, retighten it, and then crank on it and lifts it up. Then when you're done, you can tuck it up. And if you notice, it's pretty much up into the frame so that you're not going to damage it while off-roading. And it also has this sweet handbrake assembly that it, uh, locks the trailer in place when you got it unhooked from the vehicle. Another thing that's really neat about this setup is the size of the, uh, the water fill up. You can actually drop a uh, water pump down in there and you get yourself a shower set up that's pretty quick and easy. So I really like that feature. You've got an instant shower and you know in under 10 seconds. So one of the things that, that uh, is me just being picky is the tire size. This is a 39 50 15 with most overland type vehicles that are equipped for long expedition travel are usually going to be running a 16 inch rim. Um, it's not a big deal but it would just be nice to to have a matching size tire uh, a rim size on the trailer itself. Okay so while we're in this part of the part of the trailer I just want to uh, address a couple of concerns that I have. Like I said, they're not big deals, but they can cause problems, and it might be something you want to watch out for. Uh, the first is the, the latch. If you notice, it's in a hole. If this fills up with water and you're driving in the cold, this can freeze over and you can't get to your latch system without you know, chiseling it out. The other thing, and like I said, these are all reflected on the price. So the other thing is the, uh, the canisters holders have to be changed, the fuel for the um, the propane, the propane canisters need to be changed because these will not fit an American style uh, propane container. So these are the um, the ones that came from South Africa. These are the, the power plugs for the lights and they just plug in right here. Now because this is already built into the camper, I opted, it was easier instead of changing it all over to American, it was actually easier to go down to the BMW motorcycle dealership and they sell these plugs for like two bucks a piece or three bucks a piece. So I got a bunch of these and converting all my power power needs to, to this plug in right here. But one other quick thing that I would probably change is the, um, the fact that this has metal gas cans. Um, I really like the plastic ones over the metal ones. You can go back and forth you know, the plastic ones can get holes in them, whatever, but these rust out from the inside. And so you'll end up with a bunch of grit and stuff inside there. So I really like the uh, plastic ones for a long term.